Sixth item on the agenda, rezone 2013-15 Caramel Development. The request to rezone 213 acres from PD to CG. That would you please present. Yes, ma'am. This request ultimately is to change a portion of the subject property, which is an existing manufactured home park on Old US 41 North, from its PD designation to general commercial or CG. We believe the primary motivation is to construct a Dollar General on the property, and you can see that within your package. You have a site plan that indicates that. The overall recommendation from staff was for approval. I'll be happy to try to address any questions you might have. The only updates I might share with you are based on the questions you had at your work session. And staff did receive um, some communications through uh, the zoning office about various uh, adjacent property owners checking in. I believe we had two phone calls about adjacent property owners wanting to know about the request. And then we probably had around eight phone calls from the existing residents of the manufactured home park trying to address various questions about um, movement and approval um, for that. And I know the applicant's agent will probably speak more about this, but I can tell you that they have not been um, silent on that issue. They actually had a neighborhood meeting um, with, the, with the homeowners or the uh, residents to try to address some of those questions. So you're walking into that as of this public hearing. Um, regarding the questions you had at your work session, the ownership structure of the Dollar General, uh, Tara Moore will actually purchase and develop the subject property, and then Dollar General as a corporation will actually lease that back from them. But Terramore is actually one of their preferred um, developers, but that's how that ownership structure works. It's not um, as much as a franchise like we had spoken about. It actually is the corporation who will own it at the end, or lease it at the end. Terramore will actually be the property owner. Um, you also had a question about the 41 widening. Um, with that, I can tell you that in 2008, that project for the improvement of 41 was withdrawn. Um, in 2012, it actually appeared on the t -SPLOS list. That t -SPLOS ultimately failed. Um, and as of right now, it's not on any official uh, transportation or improvement list, uh, SPLOS or MPO related. It's just an idea for future improvement for this road. So it's really not in a very official status, but that is just how it currently exists for the county engineer. So. I wanted to do, uh, have that information just so you knew. Otherwise, we do believe it's ready for your consideration tonight. If you have any questions, we'll try to answer. Are there any questions for the staff? Okay, no questions. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Are there any questions for the staff? Okay, no questions. Is there anyone in the audience <coughs> that would like to speak in favor of this application? Please come to the podium. This is the, the subject property is a portion of the Mineola trailer park uh, that's currently there uh, that I believe comprises approximately 11 acres. Um, the subject property is going to be subdivided from that. It's a little over two acres um, for the development of a dollar general store. Uh, Mr. Davenport did a good job of laying out how that structure would work. Uh, dollar general does lease back the property, uh, typically for a, a minimum term of 20 years. Um, the property is currently in a PD, uh, but we're requesting a change to general commercial. It is within the urban service area, the future development map, and it's also within the neighborhood activity center character area, uh, which does allow uh, general commercial zoning. Uh, of course, we're just due north of the Smoke Pig and the Smith Hospital and everything else. Uh, it's moving, essentially moving out that way in 41 as that area grows. Uh, you know, the applicant believes this is a, a great location for this type of store. There's, there's not uh, a, a general store, so to speak, uh, or even a, a grocery store out in that area. Uh, now, there may be in the future on North Belhasta Road, and there, of course, some further in Belhasta. But, um, but that's, that's the end of the sport. Uh, so with respect to the zoning, I mean, we do ask that you follow staff recommendations. Uh, I, I will point out, and Mr. Davenport touched on it, you know, we do have nine or ten tenants, uh, mobile home tenants on the property, and I think the applicant and the owner are, are very sensitive uh, to those tenants and the fact that they're going to have to be relocated. Uh, there's been much discussion about this and how to proceed and how to handle it with those tenants. Um, 
Mr. Singletary, the owner, uh, sent out a letter a week before last to every tenant on the mobile home, not just that are on this portion of the property, but all of them, uh, to meet with him. Uh, he did have a meeting with them last Tuesday. I believe 20 to 25 of the tenants showed up. And there was some general discussion about sort of the timeline of things and costs to relocate and all that. Uh, it, it's my understanding um, the current owner has about five empty spots on what we left of the Grand Park. So we could anticipate moving uh, half of those tenants over there. Um, the other half, of course, all these tenants are tenants at will. Uh, none of them have uh, signed lease agreements. So we were going to work with them, give them you know, 60 to 75 days to find uh, another location, probably before the property is even purchased, uh, after we get through uh, government approvals and all that, uh, to find another location. And then, you know, it's also anticipated that the owner and the applicant will share in some of the costs, the relocation costs, to help them, them relocate. So, uh, you know, I know there have been a lot of calls from the tenants, and I just want to make y'all aware that, that the applicant and the owner are sensitive uh, to those concerns that the tenants have uh, in the in the mobile home park. Um, you've got a copy of the site plan, it's a preliminary site plan, but uh, you can see, I mean, the building is stationed pretty much in the center of the property. Uh, there's a six foot of eight fence on the north uh, property line and the south property line of the property uh, to provide privacy to the uh, adjacent residences uh, to the south and the existing, what will be full remain of the existing mobile home park to the north. Um, there will only be you know, one entrance uh, off Highway 41, so no entrance out back to Stewart Circle that's contemplated. Um, brought up a, a question about the widening of U.S. Highway 41, and before I walked up here, the engineer leaned over me and said they did contemplate that uh, in the site plan, so that's taken into account as well, if that does happen in the future. Uh, I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. You know, this does fall within the uh, Porter Road Overlay District, and so there are certain aspects of the site plan that are required because of that. Um, you know, most people probably have cross access, and I don't know if those will ever be used in the future, but if there is future development to the north and to the south, you know, I think the thought is, and the intention is with the overlay district that um, those properties tie them together for cross access. So. Ben, just to be a little tenant, tenant sensitive, I, I, as you said, there, there are about 10 homes on our uh, chart that are in this proposed area and uh, you said there's about five spots left in the balance of the manufactured home park. So could it be the understanding of this commission that those people that will elect to be moved will be moved at no cost to them? Um, I know Mr. Singletary has gotten quotes, some quotes on uh, the cost I believe it came somewhere in the neighborhood of $1,500 per trailer. Um, and that's even if, they, you know, if they're moving 20 miles away or 20 yards away you know, to the existing spots. So I, I think the intention is that the, and nothing has been decided yet, I will tell you that, but I think the intention is that the applicant and the owner will pick up, if not all of it, up the vast majority of that. So. But oftentimes in relocation somewhere, you, you may have the well and septic tank issues mm -hmm. to be a part of that that whole moving cost. And, um, and it, I mean, you did state that they're, they're living there and we'll understand that. But I just, I mean, the fact is, people's pocketbooks are tight. And I imagine, I know some folks have probably been there a long time. Yes. Some, some single folks living there, some elderly ladies and such what. And, um, that's tough. Yeah. I, I, I would just like to make sure that, that if, if they are relocated within, within the existing park, that it would be at no cost to them some way. I think that, and I have to get Mr. Singletary and maybe one of the, one of the applicants to come up here. I don't know if I can 
commit them to that, but I will say we've got quotes, and I, I do believe I can speak and say that we're comfortable with the you know, quote came back to $1,500, that they would pick up that. And it's unfortunate. And I, don't, I don't believe it would be any more than that, especially if you're moving within the road home bar. Do you have any other questions for dinner? Thank you. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Um, I know that this is part of the North uh, Corridor Road Overlay District, and I don't know what specifically that means to the building itself. Are there any specific criteria as far as the massing or articulation of the building? This is a we, we know what the typical building might look like. This area is a, is a nice area. It's heading in the uh, future for that area. Um, it's going to be aesthetically pleasing, but continue in that direction. Is there anything? In terms of design and architectural guidelines, uh, I'm not aware of this. That might be a better question than you feel or Clayton, but I'm not aware of any off the top of my head. I think mean, most of them have to do with sort of site layout mm -hmm. um, and setbacks and cross access. Ma'am, currently the, the corridor really applies to access, cross access. We do have some signage regulations and parking regulations to talk about layout. We don't go as far at, right now about aesthetics. And, um, How about landscaping? No, ma'am. No, Not right now. I mean, I think the only closest we get to aesthetics would be for like mini storage, some use like that. But for general retail, we don't currently have those standards. Can I ask one more question? Sure. Uh, on 41 North, uh, I know that's the existing manufactured home parking. You have an occasional person going north that will stop and turn left into this thing. But and I, I know these folks at Dollar General open a lot of folks stop and turn left. Is, what what is going to be there to relieve that northbound traffic congestion? Yeah, um, I'm not aware of anything. You know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm just coming south for showing the diesel money. That's true. Um, but going north. I'm not aware of anything that's proposed now. That's not saying the DOT would require um, something when we get further down the road in terms of development. And if they don't, you know, the DOT are the auditors of that. And uh, of course, if they think it's needed, they're going to make care more uh, come out of pocket and comply with their standards. But I'm not aware of anything that, uh, that's required at this time. Clayton, do you know anything on the, coming from the north? Turning lane. Um, that would be this road is actually not. Sir, you have to. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I can I can have Clay to come up and address that. You know, some more. Sure. For the record, my name is Clayton Milligan with Level Engineering at 3998 in the Perimeter Road. Um, old Highway 41. It's called Old Highway 41 because it's actually not um, on the DOT jurisdiction anymore. They took it offline. So this would be uh, governed by Mike Fletcher and the Lowndes County Engineering Department. I will say that everywhere that we go with these Dollar Generals, the traffic count that come from the, the IT traffic manual, um, I've never had one that actually fit the count for a left turn lane. We often have the right detail lane, but we're showing a detail lane on this one for the right turn lane. But there's not enough left turn movement to um, warrant a detail lane, a left turn detail lane even if it was on a e dot route. Say that I understand that question, I'm sorry. The way the the driveway manual for Georgia DOT works, they have a step they have a requirement for right turn for a right detail lane. And then they have a separate charge, a separate um, turning movement requirement for left turning vehicles. The traffic volume that the, this size Dollar General store will generate doesn't doesn't create enough left turn movement to fit the requirement for a left turn lane. They almost always fit the one for a right turn lane or a right detail lane. But it never does on the left. Left turn lane. Any other questions? That's kind of where you think you're going to have traffic coming both ways. Everybody not coming from the north going south. Right. Even when we split, we split it. Usually we split it. 50 /50. I, I, I know Dollar General hosts up on the post in Foxborough come over there, don't they? Right. <laughs> they can't turn in, but they hope they could. Right. 
the the left turn movement, the requirement for significantly the to trip that is a lot more left turn than right turn. And I'm not sure why both the DOT chose to divide it up that way. Thank you. Yes, uh, sir. Yes, yeah. Are the uh, Jason, you may be able to answer this better. Uh, are the two variances? Uh, we would have nothing to do with that, of course. Yes, sir. This application, but it's necessary for this to go through. I assume, and then the variances would be pursued. Um, they are currently applying for two variances. One is the width of the lot. The corridor overlay actually wants them to have 250 feet. And they're asking 225. The second one is a uh, connection to a sewer line, which is a little bit further south than they would like to be, but it's within our 1,000 foot connection requirements. So those are the variances. They're not necessarily um, required to be approved before the rezoning. Um, they are on schedule, Ms. Carmelo, for next week. So it happens to fall that way, but they're not um, contingent on this rezoning. We believe they're going to be able to develop um, regardless of the variances. They just are seeking some relief from some of the development standards. So there are two. The order in this case for those two variances are not pivotal to their development. You know, and we're concerned with the PD CG. Yes, sir. Okay. I have one more question. The site plan is showing two um, cross access, the 24 foot wide aisles, driveways, but clearly those are, there's an opaque fence that goes right across. Is that something that is being, is it because of the- That's required by the overlay of the letter. Do they connect to anything technically? Do you understand? No, it's there for whoever develops in the future, future that they can tie on. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? If not, thank you.